Today I'll show you what really prompted Alberta's now former Parks and Environment and Climate Change Minister Shannon Phillips to cancel the public consultations in her plan to turn the Bighorn backcountry into a massive park off limits to fun and freedom. Alberta's brand new Parks and Environment Minister Jason Nixon has just cancelled the NDP's plan to turn much of Alberta's eastern slopes backcountry into a huge provincial park. Now that plan was replete with crazy new rules that drastically changed the way the people who actually live and work in the Bighorn use the land they've used for generations. And worst of all, the NDP tried to do all of this without giving the residents a say. Now I think it's important here that we lay down the timeline to start. The public consultations for the Bighorn backcountry started back in 2018. In December of 2018, they had consultations, then they broke for Christmas. But the consultations weren't going well for the NDP. People hated the proposed changes to the Bighorn backcountry, and they were letting the NDP know at every opportunity. So the NDP took action in the exact way you'd expect tyrants to do. January's consultations were cancelled on January 5th, with the Parks and Environment Minister at the time, Shannon Phillips, saying that she had been advised by the RCMP that she needed to cancel the consultations for safety reasons, even going as far as to say there were open investigations due to complaints about threats. Well, the RCMP then exposed Phillips as a liar when they came out and said that no, there were in fact no open investigations at all. You can see my entire breakdown of the multiple times that Phillips lied about the decent people in the Bighorn simply for opposing her plans for their backyard playground at firephillips.com. Now even though the RCMP exposed Phillips as the liar I know she is, I wanted to know what was happening in her ministry as they were making these decisions to lie and then slander normal Albertans whose only crime was to disagree with Shannon Phillips. Now I finally have the Freedom of Information packages back. And of course it confirms that Phillips is a liar, but what it took to get my hands on these documents is a scandal in and of itself. You see, we submitted a request for these documents back in January, almost right after Phillips cancelled the consultations. The government bureaucrats then took an extension in February, promising us to have these documents by March 11th. We finally received this information last week. It's almost as though there was something sort of important happening in March and April, like an election campaign. Yes, the NDP desperately needed to suppress this information to protect Shannon Phillips' seat in the legislature. I suppose the NDP realized that being exposed in writing as a bunch of serial libelers of good and decent people would be sort of a bad thing to happen in the middle of an election campaign. Now let's get right into this Freedom of Information package. I'll show you some of the arguably threatening things that were said to the NDP, but I'll also show you the conclusions of their security that just don't jive with what the NDP said and did in the end. The emails here start on December 14th. Matt Dykstra, who used to be Parks and Environment Minister Shannon Phillips' communications guy, sent a post that was left on the My Wild Alberta Facebook page for a threat assessment. The post read, It's no longer time to fight, it's just time to kill them all. On December 17th, John Muir, who is the Director of Communications and Public Engagement for Parks and Environment, did pretty much the same thing. The post he flagged said, I can't believe someone has, and I'm assuming that should say hasn't, shot her yet, referring either to Shannon Phillips or Rachel Notley, I presume. And the other post he flagged said, the only way they will take notice is to fight back, rip their signs out. When they come with deadly force, be ready to push back. The only way they will take this seriously is if blood is shed. Okay, yeah, don't say that stuff on the internet. If you do, you're kind of unhinged. Fight back at the ballot box. That's the best way. Now, we can see here that on December 15th, in an email, the suggestion to cancel the upcoming events comes not from the RCMP, 
as Phillips said, but from Philip Hofer, a government employee with Parks and Environment. He writes, several concerning Facebook posts have appeared over the last day. I've attached a couple that I would consider to be intended to incite. Do we have a recent security assessment and at what point do we need to consider increasing security involving RCMP or canceling the event? Looking for your advice. But on December 17th, in this email here, we can see the threats, if you consider them threats, were not deemed to be of any real concern, nothing to be calling the police over. Look at this. In regard to the Bighorn Country Open House tonight at the Lusopit Community Centre, I have some information to share with you that has come to our attention. Also, a couple of questions that I would like to discuss with you when you have a moment. No credible online threats to the open house have been made, but some posts were made to incite public fear, one alluding to blood needing to be shed if a park is created. So these were posts that were clearly examined for security concerns, and I can even see the RCMP is CC'd on this email. So the RCMP were perfectly satisfied that the posts in question that so concerned Hofer posed no credible threats to anyone. In all of these emails, no one from the public reported their concerns for their safety to parks and environment. Here's what I think, though, is the smoking gun. I found it in this email right here that happened just two days before the consultations were eventually cancelled. It's from Curtis Nickel, a conservation officer with the Rocky Mountain House District. His email reads, Next week, we'll start a new round of Bighorn Country Initiative open houses. In talking with Winnie and the AEP security advisor, John Beauchamp, a number of calls to action, protests, rally, convoys, chartered buses have been made online regarding the open houses. It appears the tensions we experienced prior to Christmas have not subsided. Between that email being sent and the cancelling of the consultations, there were no more emails about threats whatsoever or even mean words. What scared the NDP more than a couple of unfounded mean things said to them on Facebook was that the residents of the Bighorn were showing up to fight back against them in person. Between the 3rd and the 5th of January, there are no communications between parks and environment and the RCMP either. No advice to cancel the consultations ever came in. And yet, on the 5th of January, Shannon Phillips announced the consultations were going to be cancelled under the advice of the RCMP. Phillips, of course, was lying, and after the RCMP confirmed Phillips was a liar, the NDP started circulating emails on January 7th and 8th about some questionable posts. You see, the NDP were looking for new credible evidence to justify after the fact cancelling their consultations. This was the very best they could do. They dug this up. Communist values, no input from citizens, they need to be exterminated. Now, just like before, the NDP were so concerned that they didn't contact the RCMP at all. Phillips said there were reports to her of Albertans being berated in public, followed home, and feeling intimidated. I can't see that in any of these emails, and neither will you because I'll post this Freedom of Information package in full so you can read it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Phillips isn't the Parks, Environment, and Climate Change Minister anymore, thank God, and her plans for the Bighorn backcountry are in the trash bin of bad NDP policies where they absolutely deserve to be. But Phillips is still a liar, and she's still an MLA, and you deserve to know the truth about her now, even if the government blocked me from telling you the truth about her before the election. And you won't get that information anywhere else but here at The Rebel. For The Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunreed. Hey, if you want to see my full coverage about what a complete and total liar Alberta's former Parks and Environment Minister Shannon Phillips is, or to see my big, beautiful Fire Phillips billboard, go to firephillips.com.